What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack and today we're speaking about the one, the only, the stock that potentially has the most hype behind out of any stock in the world right now. We are speaking about not the oil tanker. I spoke about these guys about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago on the channel. The videos did really well and we got a lot of subs from those videos so I figured a lot of you guys might want a follow up video and now their Q1 earnings have come out so I figured this is a fantastic time to do that. I don't want to get something out there people right, I've had a few people in my comment sections lately saying I speak about the same stocks over and over again and yes I do because I speak about the stocks that I want to speak about. I make videos every single day and I'm not going to make a video on some random stock that I have no interest in just because I haven't spoken about them before. That's just not my style. I'm gonna speak about the socks that I want to speak about. So if you do have a problem with that, I apologize. I do try and keep as much variety in the channel as possible, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna make the videos I want to make. And today I want to speak about Juicy Nat. And a lot of people are gonna be confused because the Q1 earnings came out and that's what we're gonna speak about today. And they were fantastic. And the stock price went down. Nat are still down over 40% from their highs of $9. They're still down despite one of the best quarters earnings you could ever, ever ask for. So I want to give my thoughts and opinions on these guys. And I also want you all to remember, I'm not a financial advisor and I got the hoodie to prove it. And I got the mug to prove it. And I got the t-shirt to prove it, baby. I got everything to prove it. I'm not a financial advisor. Right before we get into the video, guys, can I please ask you to smash a like? It helps me out massively. It helps me get seen by more people. I genuinely appreciate it so much and it takes like two seconds. Drop me a comment with your thoughts on that as a company. I'm interested to know if you hold shares because I know in my last videos, some of you guys had massive, massive positions in these guys. And subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We're trying to get to 4,000 subs. Who knows, hopefully by mid next week or even the end of next week. That would be cool as. But let's just get straight into where we are all here. We want to know what happened with Nat, what's going on, what we can expect to happen, if I might buy them now, what I think about the dividend, because everybody speaks about the dividend, and why the stock is still potentially going down. So in order to set the scene, what I want to do is I want to look at how Nat performed yesterday. Keep in mind that yesterday was a fantastic day in the stock market. And keep in mind that their Q1 earnings came out yesterday and they were fantastic. Yesterday, Nat dropped about 7.6%, which was horrific considering what else the market did. So yesterday, the Dow Jones went up 3.85%, the S&P 500 went up 3.15%, the Nasdaq went up about 2.44%, my portfolio as a whole went up over 5%. So yesterday was an absolutely fantastic day, one of the best days we've seen in the market in weeks and weeks. A lot of oil related stocks went up yesterday as well, the likes of Exxon, things along those lines did indeed go up. Delta went up 13.77%. Carnival went up 15.2%. Norwegian Cruise 17.87%. Spirit Airlines up 24%. So there was some crazy, crazy movements in the market yesterday. And all that could do was go down 7.62%. And the market has just opened back up literally seven minutes ago and we can see that Nat are already moving down again. It's not a good sign whatsoever, people, is it? So with that little bit of information in the back of our heads, given how good of a day yesterday was, the best day we've seen in weeks and weeks, Nat's Q1 earnings came out. They were absolutely incredible, which is what we're gonna get into right now, and they still dropped. What is going on? So we're going to start off with just looking at a bit of a summary of the Q1 earnings and then I'll go through a few more points that they don't include here that I do want to speak about. All of this information here is all extremely positive. So one, our net profit for the first quarter of 2020 improved from last quarter and came in at 39.5 million against a net profit of 12.7 million for the fourth quarter of 2019 and a net profit of 5.6 million in the first quarter of 2019. An awful lot more money. Literally about seven times more income for the same quarter last year. They've made a whole lot more money. And um, the amount of money they're gonna make this quarter is gonna be even bigger. EBITDA for the first quarter of 2020 in that was $64.9 million. This is a 72% increase from the previous quarter which generated an EBITDA of 37.7 million. Now, dividends, something everybody loves to speak about with Nat. Returning profits to our shareholders through cash dividends is a priority for Nat. On March 24, 2020, we announced our 91st consecutive quarterly dividend. That's a very long time. Well done, Nat. The dividend for the first quarter of 2020 is 14 cents per share payable on June the 5th, 2020 to shareholders of record May 26th. So if you want that dividend, you have to own these guys by May 26th. 
2020. This is double the dividend paid in the previous quarter, and this is expected to be a lot, lot bigger going forward. Now, nobody knows for sure, but this is still seen as a relatively small dividend compared to what we expect to happen. Now, a bit more on how much money they're actually making per ship. So, the average time charter equivalent achieved for the first quarter of 2020 across our fleet was $44,100 per day per ship, up almost 40% per day per ship from the previous quarter. Now, so far in the second quarter of 2020, which is what we need to know, you know, looking forward, seeing if these guys are indeed a good short-term investment, about 75% of trading days of our fleet have been booked at an average TECE of about $50,000 per day, so more money, and they're already 75% fully booked up. This is an encouraging signal for dividend payments for second quarter 2020. Our operating costs are about 8,000 a day per ship, compared to the 50,000 a day they're charging. And this is why people expect an absolutely insane dividend going into Q2 and Q3 and I really do hope it's true or else a lot of people are going to be very inclined to sell which is only going to push these guys down further but I think everybody expects a massive dividend. Muted supply of ships creates a base for a solid future of the tanker industry. The world economies are gradually reopening and especially Asian economies are showing encouraging improvements. This bodes well for tanker markets in the second half of 2020 and the full year 2021. At the end of the first quarter of 2020, Nat is in its best position ever. So the shareholder just said Nat's in its best position they've ever been in. And they're currently trading at about $4.80 to $5, whatever you want to call it. And previously, you know, five years ago, they were trading between kind of $12 to $15. A lot of people probably haven't ever even looked at their max stock chart, but these guys were as high as, you know, very close to $50 at one stage. So for them to be trading, at this price, in their best position ever, full stop, it does seem awfully cheap in the short term. I recently made a video about pump and dump stocks, okay? And I said that Nat may have had a pump and dump happen. Now this does not mean that it's entirely and utterly a pump and dump stock. A pump and dump can happen to absolutely any stock, especially the days we live in right now with so much online influence. A lot of people could have bought massive positions in the company here at two and a half dollars, at three dollars, and then pushed it everywhere very quickly we see the peak of nine dollars they get out with 200 to 350 percent return and sell off and that is why we are potentially back down here so what may have happened is some sort of a pump and dump just because there was so much excitement about these guys online i've spoken about this before but they do still have prospects they still are a company that's performing absolutely fantastically so just because a pump and dump did happen doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad short-term investment i want to get that out there so world economy and the tanker market i'm not going to read all of this but i will read the last line the supply of tanker tonnage is inelastic in the short term. When there are too many ships in an area, rates tend to go down. This makes sense, it's basic supply and demand, okay? When there is a scarcity of ships, rates tend to go up. Short term spot tanker rates may be expected to be volatile. So right now, oil is so cheap, people don't want to sell their oil, they want to store it and sell it later on for a higher price so they can make more money. So right now, the likes of Nat can charge 50,000 a day to store oil for these big companies because there are so many people who want to store their oil. So what happens when oil prices go back up, which we do somewhat expect to happen by the last quarter of this year, they won't be able to charge as much money. Even when this happens though, that does not necessarily mean that Nat is just gonna absolutely tank down in price. These guys do definitely have a very good short-term outlook of you know, six to nine-ish months, and even potentially going into next year. It's very hard to know because nobody really knows what's going to happen next. But do just understand this, that when there is scarcity in regards to oil storage, people like Nat are going to do fantastically. So Nat's strategy going forward, their strategy is built on expanding and maintaining a humongous and top quality fleet, leveraging on our industry network and close customer relationship with major oil companies. These guys, you know, store oil for people like Exxon, absolutely massive guys. Employment of our ships with major oil companies is a priority. A strong balance sheet combined with a humongous fleet and economies of scale is giving a low cash break even level, enabling that to distribute free cash flow to our shareholders, aka dividends. This strategy will be positive in a strong tanker market in an improved market, higher dividends can be expected. So essentially, once again, they're just reaffirming the fact that they plan on paying out an awful lot of this extra money they're bringing in as a dividend they have an absolutely incredible balance sheet they can afford to pay out you know massive massive dividends and they're doing this so that more people will buy their stocks at least in the short term to put them in an even better position so why is it that despite all of this absolutely amazing news Nat just can't go back up in price i think that when we look at the volumes that have been traded in Nat, that's going to give us an awful lot of information so if you did watch my previous videos you'll remember me speak about just how much volume there was in that at the time and we can see that by these little charts here the volume spiked like absolutely crazy because there was so much hype behind this company 
most people had never even heard of these guys and I was one of them until I started seeing all these YouTube videos all these people speaking about this stock I didn't know who they were if you remember watching my earlier videos I said I had no interest in oil tanker stocks I wasn't even looking into any at the time it was only because of all this hype that I got put onto them and a lot can be said for that in regards to the masses having the same mindset that I did but the difference between me and the masses is I didn't buy just because there was hype because I don't like to buy stocks that are hype that have all of the media attention because you risk something like this happening. Just look at the volume for the last week or so. I mean, look at these bars compared to these massive bars. I feel a lot of people are still afraid to invest in this company because of what we've seen happen not even a month ago. You know what I mean? Literally a couple of weeks ago, we saw all of the hype push the price up over 100%, over 200% at certain prices, over 300% if you got in at the very bottom, and then sell off over 40% and kind of do nothing, kind of trade sideways for a week or so. So there's not as much excitement in regards to this stock as there once was. The majority of people who are still, you know, looking into this stock really heavily are the people who hold positions who don't know what to do next. They don't know if they should hold or sell and they're kind of afraid of what's going to happen next. Because a lot of people who bought, bought around here, here and even here and they didn't fully understand what they were buying. And that is the sad truth of it and that's why I always make sure that you guys know I'm not a financial advisor and you should never buy something just because I do or just because I speak of it. You should never buy something without understanding it and without having a plan, especially a spec stock like this. A lot of people won't like me calling it a spec stock. It is. It is a spec stock. If you go into a spec stock without a plan, you risk, you know, going up 100% and saying, wow, that's amazing. I'm not selling. And the next day, waking up and you're down 50%. You have to have entry and exit plans with these spec stocks. Now, that doesn't mean you have to get in and out within two, three days. You can plan on holding these for six months to two years but do have a plan know what price you want to get out at and know what price you're going to get out at if you lose money as well so right now simply put there isn't as much interest you know the la look at the last six trading days the volume is so so low what i will say right now though is that i'm not buying them i'm still not buying them but i actually think they're at quite an attractive price if i was going to buy them now would be the kind of time i'd be quite happy to buy as long as i had a plan but again i'm not a financial advisor don't take that as me saying you should go and buy this company right now i just personally do think this is actually a decent price to buy but just looking at the five day chart you know it's been up and down a percent or two there was a little spike there which was nice and then boom we're back down two and a half percent down pretty much so that is it for now you know what i mean that's where i stand with them i do actually think to be honest they're at a decent price for the prospects that they have for the earnings that they're releasing and for the potential they have for the next six to nine months at the very least i genuinely would almost be tempted to pick up a position in them i won't even lie to you guys i'm not going to do so i don't want to make that very clear but i do see the temptation and i do think that now they look like a much better buy than they did when i first started making these videos i do however believe that people are putting too much emphasis on this dividend i mean you're buying this stock because you believe it could go up you know 100 plus percent in a matter of three six nine months do you really care that much about what could be maybe a 10, 15% dividend max? Obviously, that's nice. That is nice extra money. I just don't see why that is something that people are speaking about so much. I understand dividends from a long-term point of view. Not really over three or six months. Hopefully, you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, please smash it like. I appreciate it absolutely massively. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. And as always, I will see you guys for the next video. Have a great day. Peace.